And thanks for joining Sapelo Nerds, a coastal science podcast. I'm your host, Corinne. And I'm your host, Brittany. And we work at the National Estuarine Research Reserve, or NEAR, on Sapelo Island, a Georgia barrier island. We've had a lot of fun listening to our fellow nerd stories, and we hope you did too, because we have a few more to share this episode. But first, we figured we should probably share a little more about our stories. Corinne, how did you get here? Well, like many of the other nerds, a lot of my background came from spending a lot of time hiking and going on outdoor adventures with my family, as well as a few key mentors. My dad was always a really outdoorsy guy and grew up in a really rural setting. I remember him telling me a story about how he was out walking with his dog until his dog got caught in a hunter's trap. You know, one of those ones with the metal teeth that snap shut if something steps on him. Well, my dad freed the dog and then found all of the other traps and set them off so they wouldn't hurt any other animals. And at the time, I was like, what a hero. (laughs) But it really taught me that we need people to get involved and do something to help nature. That's a great story. My story is kind of eclectic. There was a lot of moving parts, but my dad kind of influenced my move into coastal science too. Dad was always very outdoorsy. He kind of didn't know what to do with me. He was my stepdad and I was his only girl and he was real rough and tumbly too. Mm -hmm. And he would take me rucksacking and survival (laughs) camping. And so uh, I kind of got this mindset of like, you know, being outdoorsy and, and Essentially, I was a first-generation college student. You know, no one in my family had ever been to college. And so for me, I I kind of had that mindset of, oh, I'm going into medical school. I'm going to be a doctor. (laughs) Dr. Brittany. (laughs) Yes. Um, Clearly, that didn't work. (laughs) So whenever I went into college and was, you know, inside all day, working in a hospital, 12-hour shifts, it sucked. (laughs) And so... (laughs) I ended up uh, going to Trinidad and doing a mission trip there and was teaching biology during the day to children and was doing sea turtle research at night. And it's kind of one of those epiphany moments. This mother sea turtle was digging out her nest and I was like, oh, (laughs) this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. I'm supposed to... I'm supposed to be a wildlife biologist. So I came back, I became a wildlife biologist. And then, you know, I went so far away from people that I was so isolated and was like, no more people ever. Um, I get like that sometimes. Yeah. And then that kind of really made me like, oh, no, I need to go way, way back over to people. And I started working in naturalist events and stuff like that. And then I was like, this is not what I want to do either. And so I found Sapelo, my perfect happy medium, where I can go away from everybody on the island, <laughs> but then come back to the mainland and talk to people. So <laughs> That sounds awesome. Apparently, I need to go spend some time in Trinidad. I would love to see that turtle coming up on the beach and nesting. Well, after listening to everybody's answers, we really started to realize that even stories of events and places really came back to those connections with people. And like you said, coming back and needing some connection with people and seeing how they connect with estuaries that really stood out. Yeah, and that's kind of what I love to do as the CTP or Coastal Training Program Coordinator. You know, we do a lot of work with people in the estuaries and their connections between science and scientific communication. And while I was at the annual meeting, I learned that a lot of other CTPs feel the same way too. My name is Cirrusay Gonzalez. I work at Chesapeake Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve in Virginia, located in Gloucester Point on the Mighty York. Anita Grove. I work at the Apalachicola National Estuarine Research Reserve in Apalachicola, Florida. I'm Christine Burns. I work at the Chesapeake Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve in Maryland. Amanda Archer. I work at the Jacques Cousteau National Estuarian Research Reserve located in southern New Jersey on the Great Bay Molucca River Estuary. My start in sort of this world was as an environmental science major in college in central PA, which is actually in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And that's when I started learning about estuary science and kind of got interested in this ecosystem. After college, I got an internship at the Rachel Carson National Wildlife Refuge in Wells, Maine, and I got to spend like almost every day out in the marsh. I had a fantastic mentor, and that's where I was like, marshes are my place. They're the most beautiful places in the world. They're quiet and serene, and they're just really, really interesting. And so 
so from there, I kind of worked my way down the coast through a series of nonprofit, academic, and then eventually government jobs to kind of hone my interests. So um, I went from small nonprofits like River Keepers to tech jobs at universities to fellowships with NOAA. And as I was going along the way, I realized that I like working on these big problems and helping people, but I wanted to get a little bit more in the weeds. And the res- literally into the weeds, <laughs> yes. Put me in the Spartina. And so the reserve system is a great place because you're working at the hyper-local level, you're getting to be in communities, you're getting to talk to people, but you're also connected to that national network and you have partners all over the country. You said earlier about it being the Goldilocks position. Yes. I totally felt that. That really resonated. Yeah, it is a very sweet spot. Yeah, navigating between a lot of different worlds. I was hired. I don't have, um, I have a geography background. <laughs> and uh, so I was hired for my social science background and my community connections because You know, CTP is all about collaboration, bringing people together, making sure the local people uh, feel invested in the decisions and have the information and data they need to make decisions. So I come at it from a little bit different angle. So I try to bring people together, um, especially audiences. We're in a very rural area, and many times rural communities don't feel like they're, they feel like they're not on par with a science um, audience, and they don't. You know, they may not have even graduated high school, but they have so much knowledge. So it attempts to make them feel as important as somebody who has a degree in science. And it's also translating the science that we do so that people understand it. Yeah, I like to say that I didn't go searching for coastal science. I think it found me. So I grew up in New Jersey, which is one of the most densely populated areas. And I really didn't have like a background in like going camping with my family or anything outdoorsy like I was like strictly like into sports growing up this is probably a little bit like far-fetched but going uh back into my childhood like I would be glued to Animal Planet and like that's my thing like that is what got me like so involved with nature what's your favorite show Oh, gosh. It was definitely Steve Irwin. I was just about to say, <laughs> everybody raise hunters. your hand if it was Steve Irwin who put you on the map. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, I mean, just, you know, I it was hard to get to, like, find what I wanted to do going through college. Like, I, I it was really hard to pick between sports and, like, oh, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? I have no idea. So I kind of just like went back to my roots and like what made me happy. So that put me uh, at Stockton University. It's located in southern New Jersey. So like moving out from a really densely populated area into this more rural estuary system and got my degree in environmental science. Um, And then eventually found my way working for U.S. Fish and Wildlife and trudging through the marsh and mud. And like that's really where I developed my love for the estuary. It's a just, special relationship. When yeah. you're in the mud, in waist the deep, it. and you're yeah. in the thick of it, yeah. covered in bug bites, it's scratches. Really where you learn like the appreciation for, for those areas. So. And a lot of our reserves are located in rural areas. And it's an important part of our mission to bridge gaps in scientific communication to ensure that everyone understands our messaging and gets involved in decision-making processes, and that those decisions are made with the best data available. We can learn a lot from people's experiential knowledge, and that's why it's so important we bring everyone to the table in a meaningful way. So my name is Sabra Marie Tallchief Comet. I work at the South Sioux National Estuarine Research Reserve in Southern Oregon. And the way that I came to work at South Sioux was um, in grad school, I was interviewing tribal members on their uh, history of coastal marine species use. And there was a ton of oral histories uh, going back to just before World War II of people living on what is now the reserve and just getting to know the land and the people and everything in that respect before I ever heard of the National Estuarine Research Reserves was really special. So when I had a chance to go work there, um, that place just holds a really special place in my heart. And whenever I look out over the reserve, um, I remember those stories. Valuing local stories and people's connections to the estuaries can help communities really come together. 
And when we collaborate and effectively communicate, things can be productive even across country borders. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Empress Holiday. I'm a Coastal Training Program Associate and Research Assistant at the Tijuana River National Estuary oh. Research Reserve in San Diego, California. Yeah, and I'm also at Tijuana River. Um, and my name is Megan. I'm a California Sea Grant Fellow, also helping out with our training program. Our reserve is very interesting, and in that the the watershed that we're located in has a very binational identity. We're located in San Diego, but at the very southwestern points of the con- continental United States. So we're right up against the city of Tijuana in Mexico. Um, so naturally, a lot of what we do has a binational influence. It has to, um, because our river stems from another country. Uh, so we do work with a lot of partners there. And I've had a couple of really, really cool experiences with that. Um, one most recently was working with a number of different uh, participants as part of our Marine Debris Leadership Academy, which was the first of its kind in the U.S. Uh, it was a binational program over the course of eight weeks where a cohort of participants came once a week in to do workshops, engage in trainings, have very constructive and collaborative conversation. Uh, And those were located in both the U.S. and in Mexico. So there was a ton of travel involved. Uh, Participants in the U.S. got to see sites that they've never seen before, vice versa in Mexico. And a lot of the participants were people who have worked in this space for a really long time. So getting to take them to these different places and to see that the input or the sources of where a lot of the debris that we work with comes from was very, very cool. Um, And just a lot of the conversations that came out of that were very awe-inspiring. And on the flip side of that, working with kids is also one of the best things possible. I always love working with kids. They are so open to hearing what you have to say and to all these experiences. Many of the kids that work or that live near our our reserve, uh, they tend to be low income. They tend to be ethnic minority students. Um, Some of the students that live within the county have never been to a beach before, um, have never visited an estuary, you know, so they're learning and seeing a lot of these things for the first time. And myself being a person of color, being a female in this position, it's always very cool when you see a lot of students who they come up to you, you know, and and they see someone who looks like them, you know, and their questions are, I I didn't know that this was an option for me, you know, or how do I get to do what you do? Uh, Or this is very cool. I never want to leave. So those are like some of the the impacts I think that really get to me the most, which is just awesome. Yeah, I think that coming as a Sea Grant Fellow, it's a really interesting conversation to talk about estuaries um, as someone who so I studied um, a little bit of marine bio a little bit of international politics and just knew I love the ocean that's all I really cared about and I never really thought of estuaries but it was one of the options for my fellowship and what really I found fascinating was this understanding that this is a waterway that not only takes what comes from land to the ocean but it also crosses this national barrier going from Mexico to the U.S. and the collaboration that's needed. And it's really difficult. And there's a lot of challenges, but it's also amazing opportunities to see. Like with our training this last summer that Empress was talking about, it's just the type of collaboration that's needed and the type of really working together from both government and non-government folks. And it's this land, but it means a lot to a lot of different people for different reasons. And I think the personal aspects and the people aspects have been the most fascinating aspects of my work so far versus just the conservation itself. And jobs within the reserves are so multidimensional and hard to explain sometimes since the things we do involve the connections between people and science. Some people really love that part of the job. My name is Jen West and I work at the Narragansett Bay National Estuary Research Reserve in Rhode Island. So I actually didn't choose it directly. I kind of landed there by the description of this job that I'm in now. I saw it and was like, that sounds perfect for me in terms of the training, engagement, education opportunity. So that's really what drew me. And I looked into the system and it just seemed like an amazing system. And while I love estuarine science, I also love like forest science and freshwater science and I just, in general, love, you know, the natural world and 
various ecosystems, but it was sort of the job description and the, the description of the system that really grabbed me, and it just happened to be an estuarine science. Yeah, this job really becomes more than just a job or even a career. Uh, I like to always say that some people work to live and others live to work. And I think you know which one we all are. Um, My name is Shannon Lewinsky, and I work for Linker on contract with NOAA's Office for Coastal Management. And I sit in Charleston, South Carolina. So um, I started my career as a third grade teacher. And teaching science was the subject that I enjoyed the most. I loved getting students interested and excited about science. And um, one of my students actually took home his newfound enthusiasm for science. And his father invited me to come and work for NOAA because they needed an educator to create a locally relevant marine science curriculum for grades three to five. So that's how I transitioned out of the classroom into working for NOAA. Um, That opportunity then gave me a chance to share my passion for education through NOAA's Environmental Education and Outreach Program, which I did for roughly seven years. And then, as luck would have it, I got another opportunity to then work with the National Estuarian Research Reserve's education sector, helping um, the enthusiastic, dedicated professionals bring science and research to teachers and students in the classroom, as well as to their local communities. And it's been an absolute privilege to work um, with this great group of educators for the last nine years. And needless to say, it's been quite a journey from the classroom to where I am today. And I feel extremely lucky and grateful and never would have envisioned my career would take this path, but um, I'm super glad that it did. Pete Wiley, recently retired from NOAA in Silver Spring, Maryland. So when I was a child, my father was a columnist for Smithsonian Magazine and wrote a, a column called Phenomenon Comments and Notes. And it was just basically science writing, and he was just had a crazy curiosity for anything to do with nature. He was he was an avid birder, and when I was a child, he used to drag all of us, uh, me and my siblings, out to the swamp and just and just sit there and just watch nature, sit in nature. And it gave me a great love for nature and a great love for for people in nature. And so I was real. I lucked into my job at NOAA because I, I am I am an economist, and and I tried to understand how people fit into the ecosystem that we were studying and understood. And I was always on this fine line between how how NOAA operated as a biophysical science agency and the reserves specifically as a very uh, integrated into, into the community entity that incorporated both research about nature and how the people incorporated themselves into nature. So I was working for NOAA for 20 years before I found the reserves. And then I got a just a fluke opportunity to um, to head up the coastal training program in NOAA. And, and it changed my life. It really did. Because just such great, smart, passionate people. And I was just so excited to be part of it. And the last 15 years of my career was just working with these people. And I learned so much. And I was just, just thrilled to be part of it. And I, I learned and I learned and I learned. It was just fantastic and now i'm a year retired and i'm back here because i because i love being here and and i play music here um but that's but, really why you're here you just really like, why, it's a gig <laughs> but but i but i just love these people and i love what they do i believe in i believe passionately in the mission and 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 it's just awesome now if you'd like to hear more from our nerds you can check out the talk nerdy to me podcast at the link in our show notes They interview nerds from across the USA about their roles and things going on in their local estuaries. And because us nerds love podcasting so much, there's also actually two other podcasts from Reserves, the Divided Together podcast by the Tijuana River Reserve and the Near or Far Reserves Are Where You Are podcast by uh, Caitlin Deer at the Ace Basin Near. And both of those are also linked in our show notes. And I think people just enjoy listening from other people's perspectives. And podcasting seems to be a good way of doing that. Yeah, I think it's really good to connect everyone and and reminds us that before you criticize someone, walk a mile in their shoes. That way, when you do criticize them, 
You're a mile away and you have their shoes. <laughs> For more information about any of the topics we covered today or to submit your question that may be featured in our upcoming episodes, please email us at signer.socials at gmail.com. That's S-I-N-E-R-R dot socials at gmail.com. Thank you for listening to Sapelo Nerds, a coastal science podcast brought to you by the Sapelo Island National Estuarine Research Reserve. Please check back for more episodes released each month. And we really need reviews. So, you know, leave us a couple of of good ones. Really good ones. (laughs) And that's the Sapelo Sound.